Now we are moving on to the search way. The circle area is used as the common area for the community center. It's used for all of the community um, functions, from fundraisers to feasts and religious ceremonies and church services, and that includes all wakes and funerals. In our culture, the wakes go on all through the night, so someone is going to be there in the middle of the night. I was told of two specific incidents that happened in the late hours of the night during the wake. Um, one was that part of the family was standing off the circle in the cafeteria area getting some coffee and cookies and snacks. And they looked over at the casket and there was a small boy sitting on top of the casket. And so they turned, they were going to confront this kid to get off the casket. The kid looked at them and disappeared. And there's another incident at a wake also in the middle of the night. Again, the family is off to the side, chit-chatting, um, getting some caffeine. And they saw a woman walk across the floor into one of the cement pillars and never came out the other side. So those are just two of the specific claims that we have in this circle area. On our first investigation in the circle area, Christy was conducting, uh, conducting an EVP session, and she was asking a few questions. If there's any presence there, if they could make their sign be known. And here is that clip now. So there's somebody here who says, could you move a chair or something, maybe? Something we could hear? Knock three times on something? sit in the circle room unattended and see if we could catch any any noises or anything. And we just happened to catch something. The thing that's so interesting about this uh, audio clip is that it sounds very, very similar to the size that we have captured down in the basement. Could it be the same spirits? Hard to say. Our second investigation, 
We had uh, Ryan Wehrman and Christy Wehrman conducting an EVP session. And he said, I know we've had a lot of groups here tonight asking you a lot of questions. Well, we're the next group. And shortly after that, we catch a disembodied voice. Also, this is the area that we caught the uh, side in our previous clip. Here's the As I'm sure you very know, she had a couple questions asked already, and we're, we're the next group here. Can you walk across the room? To me, when I hear the clip, it sounds like a young voice that's talking. And this kind of goes with the story that Emily was talking about, about the young child on top of the castle. Shortly after that, we left our uh, audio recorder sit in the circle area to see if we could catch any more evidence. set it up on a tripod, looking out over in the circle, uh, just to catch more evidence. And uh, this is my favorite clip of them all from this investigation.
This picture here is a picture of the uh, area in which they place the caskets for funerals and wakes. On our second investigation, we had uh, Brian Mirma and Jeremy Bierman were doing an EDP section in that area. They were talking about the uh, screen flash video that we just watched, and they're wondering what else it could be. In this clip, they're talking about it, and it seems whatever is there gave them an answer. Well, the thing is, I wonder what that flash was. Well, I think it was not impressive. God damn, I wish we would have had. Yeah. Had the, well, the camera was on, it, was, it came off the screen, though. Yeah, yeah it was just on the left, left side. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could see the whole ball. Yeah. Put it nice thing on the fan board. Yeah. So I find that clip to be very interesting, to uh, be able to take uh, evidence gathered on our first investigation and even talk about it to uh, maybe even perhaps the spirit that uh, we caught on tape and have it answer us while we're doing another investigation. For us, that was very neat. There's a picture here of uh, where the Boys and Girls Club meets. This is where we took our next video here. Um, the video started, um, we just had it got set up for our second investigation, and Brian Weirman was taking our K2 suites of the area, looking for doing a baseline reading, so if we had anything else throughout the night, we had something to base it on. Well, just when he got started, he started getting hits right away. And in this clip, we're gonna be going over some of the highlights of that session. There are a few EDPs that are here, during the uh, KG session. They will be uh, prompted on the video as well. Um, it is a condensed version. Shortly, we will have uh, the full-length video on our website, paranormalfiles.org, so feel free to click on over and check out the whole video. Yeah, we had a uh, <clears throat> right here. Right here. Got to go to yellow and I asked, for him or her to touch the green light, went to yellow and even hit that. I'll say you can, that means a yes. Do you understand that? Whoa, there we go, there we go. Okay, thanks for, for doing that. I really do appreciate that. Okay, we'll start off with a yes. Are you a boy? Yes. You can make it blink. That means you're a boy. Okay. Are you a girl? Make it blink if you're um, a girl. Uh, okay. You do realize you are passed on and you, you are dead. Do you realize that? Okay. You do realize that. Uh, it's not. Just yes. yes. Yeah, just for our evidence sake, there just is nothing that would make it easy enough. You can't be in this. Just there isn't. Here. So yeah, if you want to see the video in its entirety, it's about five minutes or so, just go to our website. And that concludes our evidence portion of our presentation. Thank you guys for watching.